oriented a lime after shave. High karate orient a lime with indispensable instructions on self defense in every bathroom. <laughs> Big questions with the dead milkman. He'll knock. Okay, let's get started, folks. Uh, welcome to this week's Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. And uh, this week, um, our new album was announced on Tuesday. And I thought that maybe we could talk about it. Um, I have a couple of opening um, comments and statements, and then we can just kind of freeform take it from there. Um, it's available for pre-order from the Giving Groove website, which of which we will provide a link. Um, but its official release date is on June 9th, which is a Friday. Um, and the album's going to be available on CD and three different vinyl variants, uh, a limited edition of uh, 500 uh, copies on Philadelphia Red. But you know what? That's already sold out. It sold out the first day. Um, and uh, it's going to have, uh, there's 500 um, Philly Orange, Flyers Orange, um, which you can get from your local mom and pop record store if you so choose. And then, Why would mom and pop own a record store? <laughs> <laughs> um, you if know, it's a Mormon record store, it's a mom and mom and mom and pop record store. They're from the 60s. They're <laughs> hippies. They're They're happy. Um, and then also um, you can get, uh, there's 1,500 black uh, of the initial pressing available, all on the Giving Groove website, which you can check out from the link that we'll provide to you. Um, you can also hear the single track, the lead single called Grandpa's Not a Racist. He just voted for one on all the streaming sites now. And let me tell you, the comments are hilarious. Or there's some hilarious comments yeah. out there. Yeah, I, I was going to suggest we do a whole video just reading the negative comments. <laughs> it's yeah, it, it's 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 every idiot that you've ever bumped into. And I was we should hire a um an intern just to reply to all the negative comments with bite a fart. That would make <laughs> me so happy. Yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, we have as someone pointed out. Have people not been listening to the lyrics for the last 40 years? I don't really know what's going Remember on. Remember when everybody was shocked to find out Rage Against the Machine was a political band? <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, you can hear the new single. Well, when you order pre-order the album, either on CD or, or vinyl, you can get the single download now. And then um, the album has 13 songs on it. And um, you can see the, the track list on the screen now. Check it out. Um, and, uh, of course the whole album will be available on all the streaming services as well when they, it's released on June 9th. Um, I forgot to say, um, I, we, we should show the cover up front, but anyway, um, and let's see. So I wanted to lead off and I wanted to talk about the cover art a little bit. Um, well, maybe we should, uh, start out with talking about the title a little bit. We did have a we we sort of uh, had a little back and forth over a uh, email thread about what we were going to call this record, and at one point I think I suggested Philadelphia, and Rodney came back with Quaker City, which is our fair city, Philadelphia, PA. So, um, looks like Rodney froze. No, <laughs> no, no, I was just doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's called but, acting, right. acting, he, <laughs> but uh, Rodney came up with the, with the additional uh, end of the, the title called uh, Quiet Pills, which uh, I'm not sure everybody knows what that means. I'm not telling them. Okay. I, I wanted to call the album Punk's Not Dead, but Limbaugh is. And there was yeah. an objection that, that. Well all, my, all of my friends call it that. Yeah. Punk's so, Not Dead, but Limbaugh. Yeah. 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 Which would have made for more interesting comments, too. And that was a, <laughs> a, a graffiti, right? Yeah. Somebody, when he died, somebody out in West Philly had taken part of like a, a, a big chunk of some housing thing that they were putting around it, it falling off. So it's this big wooden thing, and they spray painted on it Punk's Not Dead, but Limbaugh is. Which I thought was. Yeah, I have a binder that you gave me with the <clears throat> lyrics and Yeah, that's what I wrote from the perspective of that's what it was going to be called. So but at least it, you know, at least it didn't wind up with some horrible alt rock name, you know, like Satan on the soap bar or something like that. So um 
So I wanted to just briefly talk about the, the cover art, which once we got the title of um, Quaker City Quiet Pills, I kind of started to come up with some ideas. And um, the idea that inspired me the most, and I'll show a picture of the actual image I found online, is inspired by a, I think it's a 1960s chemistry set. And um, I had a chemistry set when I was a kid. I don't know if any of you have. It was a Gilbert chemistry set. Um, and I used to have it set up in our basement up in Sellersville, actually where the Milkmen started rehearsing years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to make things and um, I don't think- I just I went straight to gunpowder and matches. Yeah, gunpowder and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so um, of course they don't sell chemistry sets anymore. Um, I was in my research. I didn't realize at one point they sold atomic energy sets. Did yes, you? Yes, they see did. Those? Yeah, <laughs> well, so yeah, with actual with actual uranium. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, anyway, and also one of the things I was very pleased about um, being able to include on the cover was an Erlenmeyer flask. So, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if anybody knows the the flask on the right of the album cover is called a Florence flask. And I also have a quiz for our viewers. There are two um, series, uh, there are two uh, uh, designs of a series of circles, and I wondered if in the comments people could tell me what those represent. I'm not going to tell anybody right now. There's one in the top middle and one in the lower right on the cover. So anyway. That's what I wanted to say about the cover. Is it like a is it like a um, a Venn diagram and there's something that meets in the middle? Because no, now now when we go now when somebody says like you know they get angry about the new thing and they're like you have lost a band I'm like oh no because you were the only one who completed the Venn diagram between us and Kid Rock right. you were right there in the middle and now now we've lost a band. No, I'm referring to this. <clears throat> oh, I know that molecule. And this down here. Uh, Okay. So we'll have to see if the if the audience knows what those mean. Um, but anyway, so that's that's about the cover. Um, uh, and uh, anyway, so we'll go on from there. Um, yeah, we we touched on it already. We uh, with the release of Grandpa, we've gotten some interesting comments on social media, and who knew that we had some conservative from supporting republicans as well, they're not conservative well i w i wanted to the cover i originally thought that it's, it should have been more like a like a clansman or stuff but everybody else was on board and and running that railroad and i was like i'm not i'm not going to get anything because then it would have been you know it wouldn't have been so specific and they couldn't said that but these people were going to hate us anyway so i think the the right thing right now is a lot of people just take a look at it and think it's a math rock band <laughs> they're like, oh, math rock, indie font, I'll buy this. And then they're shocked to find out it isn't. So that's good. Yes. Um, the worst thing in the world for me, selling an album. This is like, like mm -hmm. I like to think of albums as my children in that it's fun to be there for the conception. I like writing songs and making <laughs> demos. And then the studio is kind of like the birth where you kind of got to be there and you got to kind of pretend you're involved. And then this is the point where you're changing diapers. Right? Hey, come on, buy our album as Peachy Keen and the kids are digging it. And then um, and then like it, you got to wait 30 or 40 years before this child contributes to your retirement. Like Big <laughs> Blizzard is just now paying off. I mean, <laughs> there's a chance that I won't have to be eating pudding every day during my retirement. I will only drink beer with a trans person on it. So screw you, Kid Rock. Oh, and Dan, do you have any comments about the cover? I love it. <clears throat> I like the cover. Yeah. <clears throat> um. <laughs> we've gotten, we've gotten a lot of uh, kind words from reviewers and things already, which is nice to hear. Um, what's your favorite track on the record? Do you have a favorite track? Hmm. Um. <clears throat> I like them all. I would say uh, New York Guide to Art, but I don't really like to talk. I mean, 
No, <laughs> nobody can hear these songs until the ninth. Or yeah, guess, that's why we're going to tease everybody. No, I wanted to say that um, I'm DJing on the ninth, by the way, so I won't be around for the release. <laughs> for real, we'll, we'll just be playing our album all night. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I think one of my favorite lines on the record is from um, God wrote Come Junkie, which is Rodney rhymed the Jenna Torturers with Jason and the Nashville Scorchers, which is oh. brilliant in my opinion. Now the viewers won't be surprised on their birthdays. That was a birthday gift for our viewers. <laughs> I was going to jump out, yell surprise, rhyme those two things. <laughs> and and yeah, and and the, and the sad thing is, I don't think that's going to turn up in any of the reviews where anybody goes, "My God, he is the poet of the age." That's a great track. I like that track. Yeah, it's a very angry track. I wrote mm -hmm. that because people were uh, uh, listening to a lot of uh, um, well, alt rock and and pop punk and everything. And there's no sex in any of that, so it made me miss bands like the Jenna Torturers. Have you I ever seen the Jenna Torturers live? I, I've actually known uh, a member of the Jenna Torturers, and, and every day for me is the Jenna Torturers live. But you haven't <laughs> seen the actual band perform li yet live? What's that? Have you seen the band perform live? I believe I have. There's pretty much no way you can go through my life and not see the Jenna Torturers. It just, it just doesn't happen. It's it's like if you're a, like a, a Christian, you're going to see up with people sooner or later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is a different kind of up with people. As far as this the single art goes, I did do two versions of it. Dean asked me to draw uh, a picture for this for Grandpa's got a uh, Grandpa's not a racist, but and sort of suggested the 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 old man approach, I guess, or the the literal approach. And then Rodney chimed in and said, "You don't have to be so literal." So I did two of them, and one was bullets. And one was the grandpa, and then we voted on it. You can see the bullets one on the uh, Giving Group website. Yeah, people are always being way too literal with stuff. It's uh, um, I watched the thing about uh, Top of the Pops, and they were talking about the dancers, and um, oh, what's his face from Pulp? Jared, uh, not Jared. Uh, what's his Jarvis Cocker was saying they would turn the sound down and guess what the song was by the dance <laughs> that, the, that the dancers were doing. So it'd be like. <laughs> and, they're, and they're like so it was yeah so i think i think jarvis is is why i, I stay away from the literal i i like i like uh abstract versions of everything you know concrete life isn't for me anybody have a favorite story i mean we spent like almost three years on this thing and that's why i'm in trouble talking about because i spent like two or three years of my yeah, life on it. i'm ready to move on definitely <laughs> an interesting part people could know is that I, I just looked at my iPod and it said demos 2019. And I was like, oh my God. And it had, like, we had started working on songs yeah. in 2019. Yeah, it's weird to have something because you always kind of think of something. I like to think of albums as I watch a lot of fashion stuff. I, I think it's interesting. And the collection always has to be sort of cohesive. And this is really schizophrenic this album, <laughs> this album forgot to take its meds you know? i like the way i like the way it flows and rodney came up with the song order pretty much the way it is stop blaming me <laughs> well that's because <laughs> i dj album. if you but, if you dj yeah. song order becomes a thing in your head all the time because i always because i'm always thinking well if i'm djing or i'm doing my radio show whatever this song has to flow into this song and so you begin to um i can yeah i, I can I can't really guess tempos, but I can kind of guess when, when tempos are near each other. And an album should really kind of start off, and then you should get, uh, at one point, should get a bit of a rest there, and then it should shoot back up. Kind of like David Carey. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we finished it. Like, Dan, I've been living, uh, listening to the demo since 2019, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to move on. Up to when we started, finally started recording it. Well, we talked when we met in January of 2020. We decided to not play any shows that year to focus on yeah. working I mean, on a new album. We couldn't and have played that, any anyway, and then and that kind of gave birth to what we're doing right now too. It was like, but in person at first. Um, uh, I wonder what the songs would, if anything, would be different if we had been able to focus, you know, work on it throughout the year like we were going. To. Yeah, not have that break. Yeah, that's well, there, we, there was a pandemic, I believe, uh, <laughs> or maybe there wasn't. Demand the truth about Roswell. Demand the truth about Roswell. 
<laughs> but I think it, I think because we had the break, it maybe gives it a slight variety to <laughs> this. Yeah, we had time to, to, to come like up Ronnie with some said weird stuff over that time period. Yeah, I, I don't know how many other bands have done that. I, well, I know that um, I don't think it was a band, but I think his name was Mark Twain. And I think that for working on Huck Finn, he put Huck Finn down at one point and just said, yeah, I don't know what to do with it. And then came oh, back you know, to, like, with, a couple of years it, later. Yeah. It's interesting that we still managed to, like, we accidentally put a little album out with that um, Depends on the Horse thing. Like, we, <laughs> yeah. we, we, we oh, kept yeah. our, like, <laughs> our gears going. You know, we were still, like, making the cre you know creative gears somewhere out there is also the unheard dan haggerty album. <laughs> <laughs> i think of that from time to time you, you what because i've talked to that several times recently yeah. <laughs> i, I try <laughs> to get it in there joe were you saying you think of the dan haggerty album yes i do i think of it when i think of dan haggerty i touch myself <laughs> <laughs> why why do you think of the dan haggerty album I don't know. Like I'm mowing the lawn, and I think of. Uh, <laughs> the I woke up. I woke up this morning. This is. I'm not kidding. It's the first <laughs> thought in my head, and this might be a song. The first thought in my head um, when I woke up was, "There's never been a good portrait of King Ferdinand II." <laughs> and then I, got, I kept getting like, "Why would I wake up thinking that?" And then so yeah, that that might have. Uh, there might be a song. I like the title of that. There's never been a good portrait of king ferdinand ii which there hasn't and and it's not like a, like a, a photo like you could actually you could pay the person doing your portrait to make it look a little bit better but i guess they tried i don't know all right well i dare you to write that song <laughs> Go in. um my question is will uh will when daddy drinks ever come out Yes, yes. You have you have my word. I have if, if I have I a huge for it, so. well, I have a huge to do list, and right now there's some some arranging of songs and some stuff like that that I have to get done. Um, so every Sunday, as we all know from me talking about my my buddy Carl, um, I do a thing called church. Um, and although last Sunday I was out filming and, and doing stuff, but this um, and I was a little bit of church in there. But um, uh, sooner or later, it's on the list for church when Daddy drinks. We'll see the. It might be a hidden track. I don't know. Or we could release it as a single. But I've got to. I've got to sit down and rework it. I probably reworked it four or five times just when I'm testing new equipment. So often, if I get a, a new piece of equipment, that's the sort of thing I, I'll sort of demo it on. Is is when Daddy drinks. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff. I was telling Joe about a song idea I had for earlier. It's like you know, it's it's kind of an upbeat musical thing. Like we don't have a whole lot of money, but we got a bucket of cum or a barrel of cum, I think. And then it's like they're trying to like figure out where this barrel came from and why they have it. So I think, yeah, I think I'm getting silly again, which might be a good thing. Because I was getting super serious for songs for a long time. And then so now I'm I'm writing silly stuff. <clears throat> silly goose. I think there's a there's a fair share of silliness on this album. <clears throat> that's a good i think it's a good mix of serious and and satirical i'm sure people will be curious to hear about the butt spoon yeah <laughs> <laughs> although i kind of felt like i was repeating it was that's what it was sort of talking songs i do every now and then and i'm like oh am i repeat yeah so i think i, think I gotta oh, get that's that great. that's, that's how, that might be that might be my favorite one i don't <laughs> know it is something different, although I don't like the oh in there because it sounds like uh, what's his face. See, you people have no idea what we're talking about. We should replay this again after it comes out. <laughs> yeah, so I know it's like somebody describing a movie you haven't seen yet. I saw somebody start to do that. But was it before I saw? No, it was after I saw um, oh, uh, uh, the one with the um, with with King Payman. I can't believe I forget the name of that film. But anyway, that yeah. I'm done. Well, does anybody have anything else they want to add before we move on to record? I don't know. I always feel, I feel li literally like I'm doing an infomercial. I always feel so bad. Mm -hmm. It's like the thing I am the worst at. I did a, um, I did a, yeah, I did a, what's his face? I did a podcast, uh, was it Tuesday night? And they're like, so you understand we have a new album? You have a new album coming out? I'm like, yeah, you can buy it if you want. I mean, like, when you edit it, 
You should have like the old like the words up here and stuff like like where you have the phone number at the bottom and you can call mm -hmm. act now and you get a. Yeah. I mentioned it on the show, but did you know that Vince of Sham Wow fame, who later did some terrible things, but Vince was declared a suppressive person by the Church of Scientology. <laughs> I'm not. Yes, Vince from Slap Chop. You know, you're going to love my nuts. And from Sham Wow was declared a so apparently he made some film and they gave him money for it and it didn't do well and they declared him a suppressive person so i've i've always wanted to be declared like a suppressive person by like the catholic church or something i think that would be fun <clears throat> yeah okay, let's know. move I'm, on let's I'm move looking on. forward to the album coming out I oh yeah hear it yeah, because I'd like to have my electricity turned back on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pay a couple of bills. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe buy some toilet paper yes. instead of using the cat. Then a month away. Yeah. But I, it comes out literally. I'm not, I have a DJ gig. <laughs> it comes out. So, um, strange days. All right, let's move on to recommendations. <laughs> Um, I would like this week, I would like to recommend a YouTube channel um, called The Drum Thing. And it's by this Australian fellow who has a great sense of humor. He's kind of ridiculous. Um, the story behind him is apparently he got lucky a few years ago with Bitcoin. And then he's like, he cashed out and he devotes his life to drum stuff. And he bought like a giant warehouse and he just collects all kinds of weird drums. Cheap, expensive. I mean, he's a good drummer, too. He has like live streams where he plays weird stuff like he'll do videos where he takes old street signs and turns them into symbols and it does all kinds of weird stuff like that. Anyway, the latest video that I watched from him, he talks about a super really expensive snare drum, like four or five thousand dollar snare drum made in Australia by the Brady Company. And then he compares it to one of the cheapest snare drums that he owns, which he also loves equally. He probably he, he said a friend of his his gave it to him. It was probably a student snare drum worth about you know 150 bucks, and he covered it in an old T-shirt and he put these weird uh, you know fittings on it and everything. Um, anyway, he's building a drum museum in his warehouse. Uh, I, if we ever go to Australia, I'd love to go see it. Um, anyway, the latest video um, one of the uh, greatest things about it has given me the phrase a poo rolled in sprinkles <laughs> <laughs> so anyway check it that's out that's a good album title yeah. a poo rolled in sprinkles <laughs> um that's my recommendation you usually when an australian talks about drums they mean oil drums that they buried their victims in because <laughs> it's an entire country full of serial killers it is and we know it um, so first thing I want to recommend, of course, don't let the Dalai Lama babysit your kids. That's, uh, that's, that's at the top of the list. Um, all right, secondly, this is a big recommendation. And I sent this out to some friends of mine who are in the musical theater. I'm going to recommend Schmigadoon and season two of Schmigadoon, which is technically called Schmicago. Uh, if you don't know, Schmigadoon is a series on Apple TV, uh, two seasons of it now. They're halfway through the second season. Uh, it stars Cecily Strong, who you might know from Siren Live, and Keegan-Michael Key, who was half of Key and Peele. And they were a couple in season one that wound up trapped in a sort of classical musical, like a like an Oklahoma Music Man thing. And it's a nightmare for modern modern people to be living in that scenario. So the show is really wickedly funny, and I loved it. And I actually love season two more, uh, even though we're partway through it, which is called Chicago. And in season two, they're no longer in the sort of classic musical. They moved on to like a, a cabaret Chicago type musical. So it's very dark. But also, they've mixed in, for some reason, parts of hair, and Godspell. So at one point, and uh, uh, this hippie shows up and in a jail cell with a guy who's been jailed in Chicago, and he sings this song called Doorway to Where. And it's absolutely glorious. They made fun of the parable things that they would do in Godspell. It's very, very dark and very funny. Um, there's a, um, and in a parody of like a cabaret uh, type dance number, there's a song called Do We Shock You? And it's a bunch of women singing about stuff that would have been shocking 40 years ago, but isn't. So it's like, there's a man in a dress. And Cecily Strong is like, I have literally seen every um, 
season of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> so it's really, really good. I'll put up the videos for um, Do We Shock You? Because Do We Shock You is great. Do We Shock You? Because we're trying really hard. Uh, and also um, Doorway to Wear. But yeah, Schmigadoon, I feel so bad for Vienna because when the hippie showed up, I actually laughed in her ear. So, um, and I I will laugh myself so silly, I have to like stop it. Um, the other thing I'm going to recommend is the last episode of my radio show. See, I don't get paid for my radio show. I got no problem recommending it. Um, we're starting a thing for the next couple episodes where it's um, sort of a virtual trip through the country. So we started out in Portland, Maine at the Cryptozoology Museum, and we're working our way down. So the last episode ended in Leeds, New Jersey. We all know what that's about. And uh, the next one we'll pick up actually here in Philly and start heading out to Chicago. And the idea is it's a, it's a virtual road trip. And whenever we take a break, you basically throw your empty out the window and uh, it's just stop in different weird places. And it's just an experiment I'm doing. Cool. I'd like to, I'd like to recommend a uh, documentary series, three-part documentary series called America and the Taliban, which is a part of the frontline thing on PBS. It's about uh, America's longest war, uh, 20 years against uh, the Taliban in Afghanistan. And it's pretty interesting. They've so far showed two of them and there's a third one coming up on Tuesday. I would, uh, I'd like to recommend the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I haven't been to the movies in a while, and uh, Charlie got invited to go with his friends, so I asked his brothers if they wanted to go, and they were like, yeah, kind of. And it was interesting, because, like, you know, that came out when I was a kid. Um, so, I don't know, it's cool. It has a lot of references to the different games, and um, if not for anything else, Jack Black, who I'm just a fan of in general, uh, he does a great job as uh, Bowser's voice. Um, he does a couple songs in it too. It's pretty good. Um, but you know, I, it's you know, it's it is what it is, as they say. Um, you, know, you go in there expecting something, and you pretty much get it. Um, and I, is it Mario voiced by famous Italian American Chris Pratt? <laughs> the kids, my kids were were ragging on that so much. They're like, oh, <laughs> guess who's playing Mario? <laughs> And I was like, you know why? And I figured it out because after I, I never, I don't put his face to like his voice. Like it's so generic because he's the Lego man in the no. movie or in the Lego movie. Yeah. He's he's just, like an every man's voice. Him. I feel like he's more like, like innocuous or something like that. Well, maybe he was an Italian American, but he went to Ellis Island. What's your name? Christophoni Patoni. Oh, you're Chris Pat now. <laughs> but uh, Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia plays Luigi's voice, which is great. And Fred Armisen in it. Um, and yeah, it was, it's, I don't know. It was fun. It's kind of cool how they, how they show the guys as like in real life as plumbers. And then like how they get sucked into this like magical world. Fred Armistead's in everything. If you watch The Great Train Robbery, you see Fred Armistead in the background. 12 Angry Men. He was the 13th. <laughs> hey, Kat. Get out of my way. All right, guys. I will uh, I will send you out. I'm going to offer you a choice for next week. I think like five choices or something. So let me know what everybody likes best. I'll get that email out after this. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. So long. Hey, guys. Schmigadoon.